What is up, everyone? Today, um, it is, got my eyes, March, May 10th, um, and, uh, right now, I, a few minutes ago, I have plugged in the mic. I fixed it, right? And, uh, it is now fully operational. That is, uh, nice to hear. And yesterday, I made a community post about that. Now we're doing the first part after ages of what if Naruto was Grimjaw's reincarnation, part one. Last time we left off, or left off, we didn't even start the series. Forgive me, I'm also a bit rusty, but hopefully I'll get over that. Now, uh, how I'll be introducing this series is Grimjow after the series of Bleach and Cosly, like Cosly learning how to use Yacha's abilities after he absorbed some of his spiritual pressure. Uh, sort of he'd be living like, I'd say maybe a decent two to three hundred years, right? And he, during this time, I'm simply having this because he can get exponentially stronger. I don't know what to do with his Sukwan Etapal yet, but that's why this is a part one, because I could get ideas from you. Obviously, it was never revealed what his Sagunba Etapa is. It was simply mentioned that he has one or he can attain one. And what I see uh, that type of ascension being is that you truly embody your Espada role, right? For example, Kuro was uh, like the, the role for death. I mean, I believe Grim Charles was, was like destruction, and um, Kira was like emptiness or something like that. I, I really gotta renew my knowledge on this, but now we'll be going over that. So, pretty much Grim Jow, right? He would have lived out his life, and when he had, he had decided to visit Aizen, right? Right, the person in prison, the person that was supposed to be Soul King, is now really descended down to that form, right? And he just kind of go there, right? And Aizen, who would have already had a plan, right? Uh, he's Aizen. Uh, do I have to explain there? I, I don't really think I need to. But Aizen would then pretty much turn Grimjow into just pure spiritual pressure. Because due to his ascension, like his existence erasure, he's able to manipulate his people's spiritual pressure. The fact that he also has the hoku makes that possible. So he would make his plan, right? Expanding his regime, okay? Let's just call it that. By having Grimjow go to another universe, or a planet in another universe, he would then have... In a sense, set his plans to have Grimjaw take over the nearby territory, thus not having not having to do that himself, right? And he did that with pretty much all the other Spadas, at least all mostly, like uh, Okiora, uh, Sizielo went to hell, but you know, Stark, like he's just expanding his territory and his empire. And then obviously then it'll be easy pickings at that point to go and become Soul King. That's really his ultimate plan. For him, it'll probably be what, like 50 years, but for them, it'll be like a, a lifetime, right? The fact that I sense immortal, his perception is completely different. I mean, being immortal kind of gives you a new look on life because it's eternal. But yeah, we'll be going over that now. Um, it's been four minutes, and I didn't even get into the story, so I, I'm pretty excited, okay? So, without further ado, guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, we start this what if at the birth of Naruto. Now, I'd say this was this goes relatively similar. And obviously, Aizen had studied the nearby universes, and he came upon 
what would be the the world of Naruto, right? It was stated that if you were to fall off the footholds of the Karkansa, and you would just fall infinitely, right? Because it's an infinite space. Aizen and actually utilizes to, to go to other places, in which he found out about the Narutoverse. He had researched it and found out what tailed beasts were, and what were they were utilized for, being destruction. Obviously, they seem pretty weak to him because, well, he's Aizen, but to them, it was what they needed to survive, right? And he saw, like, the village nations pretty much sharing an equal amount, so they don't just go on all that war, and he understood that. So, before he had sent Grimjow to Nar Naruto's verse, or the Naruto verse, he made sure to like made sure like it was impossible for anyone to seal a tail beast so if any entity tries to merge with his soul it would just kind of s make a self-defense sequence and it would just destroy the intruder to the soul and this is what he did to Grimshaw. and i don't think that's really out of pocket here i mean he doesn't want anyone to like taint Grimjaw's soul and obviously he needs to be at his fullest power and yeah I mean I don't really see how that would be a problem to the story but yeah so Naruto would then be born right as like I do with most of my series I would have him character look similar to the, the I guess have some similarity to the character reincarnating because it just makes sense I mean having him having blue hair honestly that's that's what's gonna happen so once naruto is born right they would see this and they're like they don't like really know too many people who have blue hair right it just makes no sense and also keep on to the thought about other espadas being reincarnated because one other espada had actually gotten reincarnated there but i shall not reveal that just yet and not an actual espada but a former all right um so now naruto would be born right the events would go play out relatively the same minato would try to seal the nine tails at naruto it would look like it were the seal would appear on naruto's belly but it would just like disappear like it would fade away and they would all of all of the like surrounding people minato kishina and they would feel Kurama's life as life essence just vanish, right? Like it was just there, and then it just wasn't there. And everyone was kind of shocked because Naruto, as a kid, managed to destroy the nine. Forgive me, destroy the nine tails from just existence. Obviously, it's gonna reform. And that's just how chakra works. So give it about two hundred years, maybe, but. At that point, Naruto would be at his peak strength, and he'll have nothing to worry about. So, Naruto would be growing up, right? He'd be raised by Hiruzen for four years, learning how to use his hand-to-hand -hand combat. And, um, also, if I didn't mention... Why did I mention that? I, uh, I'm incompetent for not doing that. Hughesen, I kind of want to do this because that's how a spot is released a strength, but their strength would be sealed into a katana. And let's just say Hughesen had just a plain katana he had from an Anbu member. He had used this to seal his power, but something odd had happened. When the power was sealed in the katana, the katana morphed shape. It was no longer this, the dull katana, but it was the katana of Grimjo Yegeriakas, the blade that would conquer the world, or that planet and the nearby planets, and he felt that potency, right, and he knew Naruto was gonna be a warrior. Now, after the birth of Naruto, now, like I said, he'd be raised by Hughes, and, and over these years, he would train Naruto on how to hone his power. Not really in manifestation, but in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and also how to percept, how to perceive things at a faster rate than a normal kid. Sort of doing an observation hockey training, you know, blindfolded, bamboo sticks, kind of that sort of thing. 
and he you know naruto would just adapt to this being able to hone on his pesquisa ability and uh, learn how to perceive the life force around him sort of like benny maru's uh benny maru's uh, breath of life and it would kind of be something like that uh, just not really the same thing I mean, i'm just trying to give a reference here and throughout these years uh, let's say the next two years he would start training his abilities learning how to make mini saros learning to do um sonido just other small things like that nothing too much and this is when he'll meet sasuke now they would meet the same way right they uh, sasuke would be sitting on this uh sitting by a river while naruto would just be you know walking around and naruto he sensed other people's life force just around re recently like just maybe two years a year ago at the at the the, the 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 earliest and he could see like sasuke has a lot of potential and he kind of feels this feeling in his gut just to want to fight him right so he'd walk up to him as you know, sasuke would stand up and you know kind of greet him because this is before the uchiha massacre you know sasuke has mannerism and how I'm gonna play things out like I do in all my what ifs I extend the year period by four years so right now if we're talking original canon Naruto and Sasuke should be two years old but that's not the case here so they they automatically like they get along like right then and there right and they would kind of have that fight club type of introduction right uh how tyler w was talking to the narrator i don't think he had any until he realized he was tyler but how tyler was like i want you to punch me right <laughs> and obviously like the narrator was kind of confused like why would you want why would you want me to punch you and once he did that he realized how fun fighting was like it was like a uh, sort of uh, escape from their dull lives and i'm talking about in the movie i don't know about now <laughs> what dull childhood is really that bad uh, unless you're unless you're like in one of those fucked up enemies with the weird background so so they'd realize this feeling right in, in their stomach and since sasuke sasuke is legit stated to be the uchiha with the most hatred he'd kind of be kin to some of the stuff right he just start to love fighting and he would spar with Naruto like constantly, right? Being able to like match up his strength, like he was possibly like his rival at that point. It was like Kara versus um, Lee. So they would spend the next, I'd say, ten years, right? Now while entering the academy, six years after that. They would train throughout the whole time, learning how to adapt to each other's strength and learning abilities. And Sasuke would be able to evolve his Sharingan, being able to get it to a two tomoi, one tomoi, and obviously mastering fire style, right? And of course, when he was 12, this is when the Uchiha massacre would happen, thus giving him a sort of distraction. A distraction but a way to distract himself from that to uh, training right and due to that he had evolved his sharingan to that of the two to my sharingan fully mastered because they say you can't really fully get the two to my unless you've gone through trauma in which this was the case and um yeah so i'd say about 12 years old right they'd all join the academy with the konoha 12 but note i did say someone else would be reincarnated into that world and i'd say it was a former espada now which former espada used to be the third espada but was betrayed by nodiora and Sizil. Yep, you got the question you got if you know just comment down below in the few seconds you have here i'm probably gonna wait five seconds here before revealing it but if you do <laughs> I don't actually know honestly i would still pin your comment either way because 
you knew the answer or at least you knew it or you paid attention at least that's great but this person would be none other than nelly l and obviously like she'd still like have her she'd still have her two friends dying to choke her and i don't know who the other one was that's not gonna be necessary until the land of the waves so i have a bit of time so um he would be sort of like the konoha 12 and unfortunately i'm sorry sakura but uh you're just not gonna be here okay sorry about that but yeah you you get who's replacing her when it comes to team seven but yeah that's that's happening but throughout the academy they would start their own little club right where they would fight each other and get stronger this would contain of Lee, Neji, Naruto, Sasuke, Shikamaru, Choji, Kiba, Ino, and Neliel. I hope I hope I got everyone there. If not, it's basically just Konoha 12 without Sakura. I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going to happen in that timeline. Uh, I'll probably think of something, but it, it, most people don't really care about Sakura's character. So, But... So yeah so it's konoha 12 and Leo practically as they start their fight club as they use this as an opportunity to get stronger and adapt to each other's strength and obviously there was now two Hyuga prodigies there being neji and hinata and actually this would be a great way to sort of settle the tensions because uh, between their families not families but between them and what happened to their fathers i mean it was mostly neji's dad that got killed because of the cloud and honestly they 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 got over that really and now hinata is learning how to use some of neji's um stances and techniques and later on she'll be able to learn the palm rotation but they're only 12 at this moment so that's that's not going to happen right now but this is an advantage. By the time they'll be graduating, she'll be having her twin lion fist. And if you didn't know, that absorbs chakra. Let's just say it's very useful. Now, I'm gonna do a time skip, but I kinda spent over what six, seven minutes going over the training. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I need to move on. So and over these few years, they would get to know each other. They would become like family, right? Pretty much. And once they all got selected to their teams, right? Or not selected, but they all did their graduation exams and pretty much passed. And when it came to Naruto making the clone, I'd feel like he'd sort of do a similar technique to what Shunsui did. How he made a clone against Lily Bar, but sort of in his own way just molding Rihatsu into something new and he'd be able to figure that out so he'd be able to pass he made a clone he has peak physical strength speed and he, he, he easily passed the accuracy test and he's also good with Kenjutsu or what they call it Kenjutsu in that world but Naruto calls it um, I don't know if we call it like if we call it so, Zanjutsu, I mean, I guess we would in this case, even if he's in a wrong car. I don't think Zanjutsu say it's just sword fighting. It's not really saying like Shinigami fighting, right? So it's kind of akin to everyone else who knows how to use a sword competently. So what would occur from here is, you know, Ruka would hand out everyone's head headbands to pretty much everyone. I mean, Konoha 12 which in this case would include Neliel, as they'd all pass. As Naruto would be walking out with Sasuke, as they'd hear a bunch of whisper, right? They would just kind of shrug it off. People are just talking, but it was in the forest. And with Naruto's, you know, being Grimjaw's reincarnation, he'd have more access to Pesquisa, right? Having a wider range, meaning you can hear that. You can hear some what if they're saying. And that'd be weird honestly because if you walk in the wrong direction well people yeah you get me yeah, if you know you know okay but he'd hear mizuki whispering about him 
talking to a kid about stealing, uh, stealing a scroll from Hewson's office as a secret test, and he's like scratching his head. When did Hewson ever talk about this? And he's like, no, I mean, he must be a rogue nin. No way. Hewson never had such a test that'd be impossible because you would try to sneak past the Hokage. That doesn't seem logical. It'd be more of like a tuning or joning test, not a getting test. Or not even an alternative getting test. If this was a getting test, it would be the first one. And the origin of the getting test would be the alternative. But, um,. He, you know, they'd seal the presents, and they'd go into the forest, waiting for the kid to go about his, his or her day, or their day, okay, let's just say that, to simplify it. And, um, now we time skip to around the evening. Naruto and Sasuke were pretty much tailing him, and seeing where he was going. Being in another forest, being the forest of death, kind of near that general area. As Mizuki would then be meted by the kid with the scroll, as you know, he'd hand over the scroll, and obviously Mizuki would then take out the shuriken. As, as he's handing over the scroll, right, pretty much Naruto would appear and you know, th you know, like make a joke, not really a joke, but he would be like, "Thanks for the scroll," and he would just take the scroll, right, and Mizuki would be shocked and he would go to react, trying to grab Naruto, but. He would be um, incapacitated by Sasuke. As Sasuke was like, you know, he was talking to Naruto who had just reappeared. And he would say like, how much do you think we'll get for rogue tuning? As Naruto would think to himself, he remembered his Sasuke's brother, his bounties in the millions of Rio, And he's an S rank. Rogue tuning would go about B to A rank. And he would look on his neck and he would see this curse mark, not a curse mark, he doesn't know what a curse mark is, but he would see a mark and he'd be like, maybe that'll, maybe that's important for the village intelligence, maybe we'll even get more from it, right? And suddenly Bojo Ambu would appear as they'd be kind of shocked and they would just throw a bunch of smoke bombs and obviously then as the smoke disappears, Mizuki's gone, and the Anbu all just vanished, right? Later on, Huzin would call them, and he would congratulate them on, you know, doing what they did, and, uh, they, he would, you know, they would give him, the, he would give them reward, but he would also say if they saw that mark, as they would nod their heads, as he was going to want to explain, but that that was the curse mark, and... That's Orochimaru's mark of power. And if Mizuki had used that, he would have easily went to low joning. Not easily, but he's just exaggerating. He'd be joning levels of power. And Naruto would think to himself, as he would ask Kirizan, is Orochimaru strong? Like, maybe even stronger than you? As he would the same, stronger than my prime? I don't think so. But stronger than me at this moment with his all of his uh techniques i'd say so it'd be an interesting battle as you know naruto would say so if i beat him that means i could beat you as obviously like throughout the years naruto has sparred sparred with he was in like many times and he kind of sees tries to aspire to be stronger than him and he was in respond yeah he would definitely be stronger than me but I see you have a lot of potential ever since you were born, and I hope you achieve that, as always. But anyway, um, have a good night. So, Naruto and Grimjo, like, they, Naruto and Sasuke, they would go about their day as, or night, as they'd be walking around the evening in which they would bump into one of their uh, friends, being Nelly Yell. As, obviously, next to them was her two friends, uh, Don the Joker and... I still forgot his name, but it's their um, um, their two Privion Spada, uh, pretty much meant to serve her, just like uh, the other Spadas. I don't even think Okura has one. Now. I don't know why I was thinking, but Okura does not have one apparently. But um, I don't know why I was thinking that. But they they start like doing small talk, and you know, obviously, 
uh, they would then go about their day. I don't even know why I mentioned this, but I, I kind of just felt like it. But um, Naruto would head home, Sasuke would head home, and uh, yeah, that would kind of mark the next day, or that day, and then we go into the next day. So yeah, um, it's actually where I'm leaving off this part. Uh, I kind of wanted to do this part, and just kind of didn't go too much into the story, but I wanted to see if this series would be enjoyable, and I really hope it is. But without further ado, guys, have a good day. Thank you.